Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on using the sine rule to find acute angles in non right angle triangles. Now in the previous video we looked at what the sine rule was and the sine rule is a way we can work out unknown angles or sides when we don't have a right angle triangle. If you had a right angle triangle we can use sort of traditional trigonometry like the Sokotoa stuff like sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse etc. But if we have a non right angle triangle we have to use different formulas, for example the sine rule. Now remember how the sine rule worked, if we had a triangle and we had the sides little a, little b and little c and remember to label the angles opposite the side little a we would have the angle capital A, opposite the side little b we'd have capital B and opposite side c we have angle capital C. Then the sine rule was this, that if you take any side like a for example and divide it by sine of its opposite angle that always remains the same so that would be the same as b over sine b and that would also be the same as c over sine c but I'm not going to put that in here. Now there's actually a variant of the sine rule which is more suitable for angles so what we could do is we could just reciprocate flip both sides of the equation and then we get sine a over a is equal to sine capital B over B and this variant of the formula is more suitable when we have unknown angles rather than unknown sides so we use this formula if the angle is unknown and if it was a side that was unknown we use the first form like we did in the previous video and the reason we're using this other form is it's just easier to solve your equation if the unknown in this case the angle the angle will be the capital letters that will be at the top of your fraction rather than bottom and it just makes it a bit easier to solve we could use this it's just going to make your life a bit harder so the steps as before is to label your sides with like the a b and c and then step two is to substitute into the formula and then solve okay right so let's label the sides first uh, we want to use a and b so this can be the side a it doesn't really matter whether you make this a or this a and then the other side b and we're not going to use c because we're not involving a third side and then in terms of the angles well opposite side a is angle capital a and opposite side b is angle capital B. So we've labelled it. And remember we use the sine rule, whether for unknown lengths or unknown sides, if you have these kind of side angle opposite pairs. So we've got a side with its opposite angle, a side with its opposite angle. That's when we use the sine rule. So let's substitute into the formula now. We're using this version, so sine of capital A, so sine of 80, divided by the length of the opposite side, which is 9 is equal to sine of capital B, so sine of Y, divided by the length of the opposite side, which is 7.5. And now we just need to solve this. We need to get Y on its own. Well, as usual, we think about what's happening around the Y and then undo those things in reverse order. Well, Y was being signed and then it's been divided by 7.5. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 7.5 first to get rid of the over 7.5. So we're going to get 7.5 times by sine 80 over 9. If we wanted to, we could put the 7.5 at the top of the fraction. Remember when you times a fraction by a non-fraction, that non-fraction goes at the top. So we get 7.5 sine 80 all over 9. And then timesing this by 7.5 gets rid of the over 7.5, leaving sine y. Now we want to get y on its own to solve for y. It's being signed. We want to get rid of that sign, so we do inverse sign of both sides. And if I do that, I'm going to do inverse sign, sine to the minus one, as we write it, of this thing. So 7.5 sine 80 over 9. And then inverse signing the right hand side will just get rid of the sign because inverse sign cancels out sign, leaving just y. So I just need to shove this in my calculator now, making sure you close any brackets. So shift sign to get inverse sign. And that gives me an angle of 55.2 degrees to one decimal place. And that is the final answer.